Praise God. We turn to the word of God. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days that I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long. And my age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily, every man living is altogether vanity. For man walketh in a vain shadow, and disquieteth himself in vain. He heapeth up riches, and cannot tell who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is even in thee. Deliver me from all my offenses, and make me not a rebuke of the foolish. But thou with rebukes dost chasten man for sin, thou makest his beauty to consume away, like as it were a moth fretting a garment. Every man therefore is but vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and with thine ears consider my calling. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner as all my fathers were. The Lord is my refuge and strength, a very present help. In trouble. Together may we repeat the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. Today we are gathered here together to give thanks for the life of Mr. Desmond Drummond. He was born on December 7th, 1955 and he departed this life on November 30th, 2022. He was known as Jamites and Desi. I know there are other names. Uh, you may know those names, but let's just keep those two uh, before us for today. I want at the outset to just express my personal sympathies to the members of the family. It's always a hard thing to lose a loved one. And we may not understand the feeling until we are in a similar position. But I want you to be encouraged today as you lay your loved one to rest and look to God because we know that God is with you and He's able to sustain you. His word declares that His grace is sufficient to keep you and He will keep you in all your ways. He is the best friend you will ever have. No other friend can compare to the friend that we have in Jesus. I want to welcome you all to the Glad Tidings Assembly of God and feel free to just worship the Lord with us as we go through the service today. Let's stand for the opening hymn, How Great Thou Art.
we need to give him praise for his goodness. Just wave those hands and acknowledge the goodness of God. Come on, just wave those hands and stand. Give a shout out. Hallelujah. Indeed, God is worthy of the praise and the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Please remain standing as we invite Sister Palma to lead us to the throne.
that God is the strength of your heart and your portion forever. I invite you to trust in the Lord at this time for strength, provision, peace, and hope. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. On the behalf of Reverend Power Pong, the Board of Officers, and the members of Glad Tidings Assembly of God, I express deepest and most sincere sympathies to Sister Adasa, sorry, <laughs> to the family of the Germans. Be encouraged as you face this hard situation and be reminded that God is close to those who are broken hearted and he saved those who are crushed in spirit. He heals the broken heart and heals the wounds. I encourage you to continue to be strong and turn your eyes unto God who is able. God will never fail you or your, or your, and you are in our prayers always. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, do not fear for God is with you. I thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are waiting for the reading of the first lesson. Akilia Johnson. Is Akilia with us? And then immediately after, we'll take selection, Annette Drummond Jackson and the deep Bassel. Okay, can we take uh, Annette Drummond Jackson and Nadine Bassel? If you miss me, don't come searching, and if you don't find me,
Okay, should I just go along?
singing about Jesus. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel great in this thing. Family members don't feel disrespected when you see me dancing, singing, and shouting. It has nothing to do with disrespect. It has everything to do with worship. Amen? It has everything to do with worship because God is so good. Come on, is there somebody who knows the goodness of God? Oh, Jesus, I worship you. Can we take the tribute now that uh, we've been waiting for? Oh, it's a negative. All right, so let's move right along to the reading of the scripture from Revelation 21, verses 1 to 8. And you're to see the other, the least the other. All right, and then we'll take remembrance from Annie Drummond Johnson. Maybe after. Thank you.
And by the time you turn around, Uncle Breakfast is ready. That if you start one for now, yeah man, because biggest fish I go cook when you finish. When you buy fish from my uncle, if you buy 10 pounds, you get two. That time I tell you, whether I sell now, wash up. That's when you left in a boat. That's when my uncle I left in a boat, my uncle I sell fish, no, no trash. Whenever you, you go there, animal go arm, just fight. Me no more override, but this man can he call me Katy because of my eyes. He said, Katy, ready, by I'm saying, go home if you touch one of my car, watch out for me, not even give a tell me no, we don't know what to do. But anyway, I'm moving back, I see the bike, man, here to the same man, I'm money. When you have like a bang, it take boat. Because, you know, no car, no man, they're not in time, 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 Food, I first came to see one bag of flour and horse. And my uncle yard for half a figure of my horse. Yard! So my uncle now wash up. I know you wash up because you do it in your life. I'm telling you. I know uncle cook. cook. The biggest fish. You never hear about upper go to can. And you cook it white pan tap. Or you call it chakalaka. That are my uncle food. And me I tell you, I cook that in my underpants. And everybody, we come and see side of a party and come on the food. You can't cook sweet, you see. And you can eat no young girl dumpling for them to clean. And you can't so clean, you know. Yeah. No, you can't so clean. But, we I tell you, hot water kill germs, the food sweet. Yes, man. Whenever I visit, let me tell them what the man did. Because, and they have to take fish go. This is side more than here, and this is start to go to Pride Man, your name in that side. I'm here to write, come down, you know, come here, get me fish out of Let me tell you something. You see, some and five people, them, my job and family, if they don't give you nothing, you can't hunger when you go around them. Everything has to cook in a pot. Before they tell us, why? Food price no grow, so you know, they tell us, we don't have money. Food has to be there, and that's how we grow up. When you see me a street, I will uncle. Whenever we see uncle, some come and go to jealous guy. I say, uncle, I will be gone for that. But we so small in a sense. But I'm telling you, German family wash up, you know. Because I knew generation. But I'm telling you, we are come from afar. And we love people. But, my uncle was a good man. Whenever I visit Auntie Carol, Dr. Larry, imagine now, he and me are a good sister. Dr. Larry, one day Auntie come from far and I'm bringing a nice cool jacket for the cool. The man decides that the man or the woman wants to back a foreign and you think Auntie could have taken it from him. And if you want Dr. Larry, I don't want no more. And I saw the man, the woman. When Uncle leave, I all walk, I all look around this up, or whatever. The night bush bush. One day I'm going to see me Auntie on the eyeglass. I'm going to see me now where Auntie is on the eyeglass here. We have soap, because these clothes then become a girl that is button tear off a shirt, good curtain, and then a wash. So here me and they tell me, who have been looking at the man and he was telling me that he was telling me, he said, Jesus, he didn't like me, I'm going to tell me. Me and they are talking about his mother, he said, I'm going to tell because my sister would have seen the man I was living at the house, and I said, what's the money, I lie. And my auntie takes prayer. Wash the words and go clean up the uncle and by the time you back next week and then you see an uncle at the same spot. I will tell you, you know, it's too clean. So then you go check some and find you see auntie I run again. Where you run back and then you have dinner for my brother. Listen to me, man. They didn't love them, brother. But situations are life. They say, in a life, sometimes you don't understand it, you leave it. I cannot talk everything, but a situation arises. My uncle was a good man. Whenever my father wasn't present and my uncle stepped in a little bit, he might give me mother money. Yes, man. Give me mother money and my mother cook. And he give me mother dumpling and my mother eat. My mother clean till you know my father said, the cleanest woman. And I'm telling you, my uncle was a good man. At I, I some time, I just said, why? You see? In a life, remember this if you don't want to stone you. Wanna put it in and wanna get out. My uncle will always say, man feel love Jack, but my uncle is serve Jack. Yes. Not just love Jack, you serve Jack. Because my talk about Jack, yes, I got it. 
They see him rasta man turban up, but listen to me, man. Jano just come so no just because I say a rasta man, you love Jack. Let me serve Jack. I try make you serve Jack your life. Look how much ears he give me, uncle. But my uncle just hard. I wanna be hard, man, be please. But I'm telling you today, just remember my uncle as a good man. And I remember, I remember him all the time as being kind, but he loved the liquor. Even when he's sick and start gets sick, he's not going to the back up. Yes, I'm telling you, he's not left it at all. But, film life or film life, and we have to make it right. And we just have a few days as Pastor Palmer said, some things are right, just set them right, because we don't know if today is our last. We don't know who is next. It could be me right here, the one in the church. But make your life on earth count. Not just step on it because of company. Man, company, or as you must say, my rest of his love, Jack, if you serve Jack. So if a Jack who has served, when you serve, you don't try to ride again because it still means God. I'm telling you, just turn over your life and turn everything, give to God because we are only a few days and we are full of trouble. And we don't know when. We started knock at the door because we have an appointment with death. And I'm telling you this morning, I'm glad to be a part of the German family. And this is how I remember my uncle. I know your life and earth was troubled and no
I'm studying here to set for each and every one. Yeah, you hear everything about Jamaics, Crapsies, and as you know, from your mind, no other name that I know. I know this man from a little boy growing up until he comes and started to do things for himself. He was a hard working man, very hard working man. We have a lot of calls. I'm not here to say it was strange or girlfriend. I don't know. I know that he have plenty of calls. Work hard. He was a, a good fisherman also. Catch a lot of fish, especially Barakuta. I know that. He used fish bat. Catch a lot of fish, fishes in his bat. It's not really like now, you go to see a skiff and then come back with anything. But those days, fish was really around. A fish, a lot of fishes. You could stand on the shore and just throw it to a line and get some big fish, big fish, not no little small one, big fish, and you stand on the land. So today, one thing I regret to know that all that I know, he never said yes to Jesus. That is my problem. Real problem. I am standing here right now. I said that this man, life come from God, and you you have to serve Him. It's the most that you serve Him. If you don't serve Him, to the end you're going to shut up. And it seems like when I say to Him that. You must give your life to the Lord. It looks like it's a troll, you know? Troll, you have no time, you have no time for that. But today he is not here, just okay? the remainder of that, and it does get there. I'm not here to say, well, you're going to be with the Lord. I don't know. I'm not here to say, well, you're going to hell. I don't know. I'm not here to say those things. That leave to God the creation. But us that are living and inside here now, I'm warning you. You must serve God. He's your creator. Okay? God says, come let us make man. I can make you. And he is to be served by you. Okay? You have to come to your senses and know that if it is not God, you cannot exist. None of us. And we just get up every day and uh, do it in. We don't remember that there is a God above. You must remember that you have a creator and he is to be served by you. For what? God loves you. Okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Come on, you're talking, you're missing life. God gave life and He gave it more abundantly. What are you doing for Him? Okay? And I want to say to you today, God, the boy said, nobody are hell enough. No. God the way I send nobody in hell. No. Hell prepare for his, his day for the devil and his angels. But if you forget God, turn your backs on him. 
then you are going to send yourself there. Okay? But he loves you with you know, a lasting love. But if you don't obey and obey his commandment and do what he says that you must do, then you are going to end up with the devil and his angels. Lord. God bless you. So at some point, people you are here. I says, as I come in, uh, I, I, I see some of you. Break up your fallow ground. So no more among thorn. You are wasting precious time. Precious time. Okay? No for your cosy church. But you see this morning, you are in the church. And you know, it, the church is not, the, the, the building now there, and the church is lost. You need to fix yourself proper. Okay? So all you that are cussing the church, don't go and need the church tomorrow. Pastor Paul. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Too much of it now. Get some sense in your head. Amen. Okay? Not one day you have your dead and care about the poor and poor and children. You're not trouble. Not time to no stop, borrow pasta. Have one to no one and no borrow pasta. But why I say this thing? Put yourself in the hand of God. Things up here are no like. Mm -hmm. A lot of you that are supposed to come here and say, Wow, where are you there? Come on. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting in front of my bed. This is not this table ever planned. And I'm not arranged what you're supposed to do. And it hurts you to my heart. Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Brown, I feel good in my soul. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready to meet him? Yeah. A time for you to come in to Jesus. Accept him as your Lord and Savior and start to praise and worship him. And the word of God says, they that worship me. Jesus says that. Because worship means spirit. And in truth, your worship must be true. God bless you. I don't want to take up much more of pastor than <laughs> pastor time. Praise God. But I'm, I'm warning you again. Warning you. Gospel of preacher son find find in the early sixties. And many church come and go. And is the only the assembly of God stand in some point. Come on, time for you. Time for you to have some respect for God. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Trouble sometimes again. Feeling it.
gave you the opportunity to speak, Pastor Clark. Some of the things you say, I realize they are coming from a heart that really loves and wants the best for your people. You are a summon point man. So you are the one most qualified to, to speak the way you did. And I want you not to be dismissive of what the man of God just said to you and uh, for people from Southern Boy. But look deep into your lives as a people and see the need for Christ. You can't live by yourself. You can't make it by yourself. And you need Jesus. Amen? You need Jesus. And the, the gospel is being preached in Southern Point. I'm sure there's a church stands. I know there may be issues. I know I hear all kinds of things being said. You may not see me in Southern Point, but I know what's happening now in that church. And a lot of things being said, but stop listening and stop observing people and look for yourself. Because guess what? Each one will, well, each one must give an account to God for himself. Amen? You might look at a pastor and say, oh, pastor, now go on right. Pastor will give an account for himself. The church member will give an account for him or herself. And you also will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm going to be asking Annette to come at this time. And immediately after Annette, we're going to be asking you to give an offering. Will you do the offering? Him? Great is thy faithfulness.
Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I will share with you for a few moments. But before we do so, I want to do a song for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Like a sheep sailing out on a tree.
can check your Bibles as we read together. St. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. St. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy goods, thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your words. Speak to us now through your words. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want today to begin this discourse by reminding us or declaring to us that hell is a very real place. There are many persons who will tell us that there is no place named hell or some will tell you that hell is the grave where Mr. Drummond will be laid today. But I want to tell you today that while the scripture refers to the grave as a type of hell, there is a real hell which burns with fire. It's a place of torment. Now, the story that we look at today is a very important and significant because it gives us a number of lessons which we can we could spend the entire day and maybe much more time looking at this story and, 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 and coming up with facts that will tell us exactly that man's future is determined by the deeds that he does, by the way he treats others. Man's, man's are destiny determined by the way he lives in this life. But I want not to go very long with you, so I'm going to keep it as concise as I possibly can. But let me begin by looking at the story which Jesus told and tell you two facts about this story. The first thing is, man's greatest gain is something we call heaven. And then the second fact is, man's greatest loss is something we call his soul. The greatest gain that man will ever have is heaven. But the greatest 
greatest loss he will ever have is his soul. And I want to remind you that you have one soul. Two eyes, two ears, two hands, two feet, but one soul. And if you lose that one soul, then you have an eternal destination which you will have to live with forever. And that's why I think that what Pastor Clark said earlier is so important because he is conscious of the fact that if you lose this one soul that you have, then you are in danger of hell forever. Now, if we look at St. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, here's what Jesus said. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. And I will remove the word own, although I'm not supposed to remove from the word of God. I'll remove the word own and put one. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his one soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? St. Mark 8 verse 36 declares, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So we see it repeated, the same thing repeated in two Gospels so far. And then the third Gospel, uh, St. Luke 9 third, verse 25, it says, For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Yes. You may have possessions. You may have money. You may have all the things that are required for you to live comfortably in this life. But none of these can equate to the soul that you have. You must do everything to guard your soul. You must do everything not to lose your soul. You must do everything to ensure that your soul does not end up in, 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 a, in a state of loss which is outside of the presence of God. Yes, guard all your possessions that you have, but place a much greater security on the soul that God has given unto you. Hallelujah. Now, Hebrews 9 verse 27 tells us that losing your soul, you will have an appointment. All of us will have an appointment, but for those who lose their soul, that appointment will be a dangerous appointment. Uh, it says, and as it is appointed unto man, wants to die. All of us will die. Pastor will die. You know, after this week, I thought about my days growing up right here in this church. I would have seen throughout my, my youthful age, uh, Pastor Porter. I was very close to him. I attended many of these funerals with him. I would stand by and watch him as he, as he, 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 uh, he ministered over, over uh, caskets and uh, laid people to rest and all of that. But guess what? I saw the day came when we stood over Pastor Porter's casket and laid his body to rest. I've seen so many other persons who have done wonderful things and the day came when we laid their bodies to rest. And guess what? I know that the day will come unless the Lord comes, unless the rapture comes over that time. The day will come when I will cease to speak over people's bodies. Somebody will speak over my body. We have that appointment with them. We all, unless the rapture comes before that time, will die. It is an appointment, but I remind you, while you're living, ensure that your soul is in good order. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Let's ensure that the things that the soul needs to be kept in good order, we are doing just that. So as we consider the greatest loss, we look today at the story of this rich man and the Bible speaks about the man named Lazarus. This rich man lost his soul not just in a one shot, but he gradually lost his soul. He accumulated things in his life over a course of time. 
The Bible didn't mention that he did anything wrong to accumulate his, his, his wealth and his riches. But what he went wrong with, he focused, he placed his focus on the things that he accumulated. And he forgot that his soul would be required of him one day. Are you in that state where you are paying attention to other things? You are so taken up with everything else and not mindful of your connection with God. I can't help but re uh, return to Pastor Clark. He reminded you today that you need that spiritual connection. If you are going to guard your soul, you must have that spiritual connection. You must acknowledge that there is somebody who is bigger than you. You must acknowledge that there is someone who deserves your worship. You must acknowledge that there is somebody who sits above, he sits high, the word of God declares, and he looks low. You must acknowledge that there is somebody who keeps account of the very hair on your head. You must acknowledge that there is somebody who understands every move that you make. And you must understand that there is somebody who, unless he gives you the authority, the power, and the strength that you need every day of life, you dare not even get up out of that day. A lot of people, they will tell you uh, that no God not there. We have a lot of young people like that today, Pastor God. A lot of people act as if they made themselves and they are the master of their own destiny. But I tell you today, Mr. German Spiral, you do not control your life. You are not the master of your destiny. You are not the one who made yourself. God made you and he made you for a specific purpose. God wants you to worship him. God wants you to acknowledge him. God wants you to give an account to him. God wants you when you wake up in the morning to acknowledge that you are not the master of your life and give praise unto him. As a matter of fact, the word of God declares that it is the whole duty of man to fear God. Do you really have the fear of God upon you? Do you live as unto yourself? Do you live because you have cash and you have the things that you think you require for life and think that there's nobody like you come down off that if that's where you are? Because one day something is going to bring you down. And if nothing in this life brings you down, there's one thing that is going to bring you down. The thing called death. It's an appointment unto the rich. It's an appointment unto the poor. It's an appointment to those who have. It's an appointment to those who don't have. It is appointed unto man once to die. So this rich man, he didn't do anything to you would consider to be wrong to acquire his possessions. But he focused too much on the wrong thing in life. And because he focused on the wrong thing, and he did not even have compassion on somebody who needed that hand of compassion, he lost his soul. What are you doing to ensure your soul is kept in good order? Are you watering your soul with good deeds? Are you acknowledging the goodness of God? Are you acknowledging that God is in control of your life? Hallelujah. Or are you just thinking of yourself in a boastful way? You know, some of us are filled with so much pride. Some of us are filled with so much of ourselves. We don't see anybody can walk in our shoes. Who, so me? You're not in my class. You can't walk in my shoes. You're not like me. Because you have some dollars sometimes. Or because you are connected to some good family. But guess what? It doesn't matter what you have as your possession. It doesn't matter what family you are connected to. Death will come your way. You will meet that appointment. One of the greatest mistakes you can make in life. Is to not give attention your soul. Can I tell you young people today, don't lose your soul. 
Can I tell you all the people today, don't lose your soul. Can I ask you, those of you who have joined us online, don't lose your soul because you will face a, a place that we call hell if you lose your soul. Hallelujah. If we look at the circumstances of life of these two men as I hurry along, one was rich, the other was a beggar. One was clothed in elegance, the other was clothed in rags. One of them fed sumptuously or in, 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 in the delicacies of this life. All the, all the good food you can think about. His menu was properly planned. He had his cooks who, who would properly uh, who would look at his diet and do things according to his diet. He, was, he would eat the finest things. And the other would desire an evil cross. One was in good health, the other was in a wretched physical state. One moved high in social circles while one was in isolation. That was their physical external circumstance. When we take a look at their spiritual conditions, One was exalted in his wealth. The other was content in poverty. One was satisfied with earthly possessions. The other was longing for heavenly treasure. One selfish and ungodly. The other self a self-sacrificing believer. One had the greatest possessions one, one thing he lacked. And the other was needful. One had everything he needed while the other had nothing. Which one of those cases befit you today? Are you the one who just has everything that you need but you don't see the need for God? Or are you the one who has nothing but you are searching for God? I used to hear a song back in the days uh, where they said, I'm happy with Jesus alone. I'm happy with Jesus alone. Though poor and deserted, thank God I can say, I'm happy with Jesus alone. Let me say those who are happy with Jesus. Come on, do we have anybody here who is happy with Jesus? Hallelujah. Pastor Clark, I'm living this Christian life. And I don't find no fault with it. I know there are faults with me, but there is none in Jesus. I'm happy living this Christian life. I'm happy walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. And I entreat every one of you here today, if you are not walking with Jesus, it's a good time to walk with Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want to give you today four flames of hell. Four flames of hell. The first flame of hell is found in verse 24 of the passage we read. The flame of pain. The rich man in hell he declared, I am tormented in this flame. Did I tell you that hell is a real place? Did I tell you that hell is a place where fire burn unstoppable? Did I tell you that you will not escape fire when you are in hell? Because that is what will happen to those who uh, find themselves in hell. So this rich man, when he ended up in hell, he found himself in the flame of pain. I am tormented. I don't know about you, but I've had scorches in my life. I didn't say her. I've had scorches. I've had gone close enough to fire where I felt the flame of the fire and burn up, you know, you know, pretty. When, when, when fire touches your skin, it's not a nice feeling. But here's what happens in hell. You will be burning but never be consumed. You will be falling into a bottomless pit. There will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth all around you. There will be unbearable pain, but never a 
sense of relief, no paradigm no did it. No fencing no did it. No pain relief no did it. No doctor can ease the pain. There is nothing to ease the pain. You will just continue facing that miserable, tormented situation. I believe this rich man, it wasn't just out of a little touch of pain that he cried out and, and I said, I am in torment. He must have been experiencing, experiencing great anguish that he cried out. I can't bear this pain. Can I tell you today, you must escape hell. Escape thou all your life and tell him not in all your planes. But look ahead with eyes that are cleaning and looking unto the one who is able to lift you out of your mess. I don't care which situation you're in today. I don't care who has condemned you. I don't care who tells you that there is no better way. I'm telling you today that there is a better way. Hallelujah. The way that is better is in Jesus. Can I tell you about that is actually in Jesus? For Jesus lifted me up out of the married clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. And he placed a song in my mouth that I can sing songs of praise. I can shout hallelujah. Escape the flames of hell. Now the second flame that I, I picked up from this passage is the flame of memory. In hell, you will not forget everything that happened to you in the past. You will be conscious. You will be able to remember everything. And I take this from verse 25 of the passage. Where Abraham reminded the rich man, son, remember. Can I ask you a question? Can you remember something that God did for you? Can you remember when God took you out of a particular situation? Can you remember when you were without hope and God gave you hope? Can you remember when you had nothing and God provided for you? Can you remember when your children were growing up and you needed help and if God did not provide for you, you would not have made it? Can you remember when you were sick and you needed help and God came into your situation? Can you remember your times of anguish when God gave you all that you needed that you can make it? Can you remember that if it had not been for God, you would not be sitting here today? Yes, you can remember now and you will remember you will have your memory intact in hell. So be careful and don't make it to hell. Hallelujah. Ah, the flame of your memory will be alive. You will remember everything about this life. You will remember those who you treated badly. Some of us treat people bad, you know. Some of us take it as a joke. We just step over people and then turn on and laugh. Some of us treat people so weird, and then when we go down the road and we meet your friend, we tell them, why we just this up, how are you this up? Hey, yes, you will remember in hell all these things that you did, hallelujah. Yes, you will remember, hallelujah, all the things of this life. You will be scrutinizing your life. You remember all the wrong motives that you have. You remember all that you used to say about church people. And some of them are used to true. Yes, we know some of them are true. We know some of them always do things the way we should. But guess what? Leave all judgment to God. Because God declares judgment is mine. You have no right to condemn anybody. And guess what? You need to look for yourself. Because if you keep on judging others. And if you keep on paying attention to all the wrong way you hear the pastor do. You're going to end up in hell. And you, are, you don't want to end up in a place that is in your entertainment day and night. When summertime, you don't have no AC in your house. And you have one little piece of fun there. It has spin, but a hot year it has spin. Anybody ever have that? Hot year, not you? 
You turn your hand and in the sense you turn your back on God. Because of hot here it has no. How you feel? The fan on you is still sweating. You put you take off the sheet. Because you're hot. And when you take off the sheet, what happens on God? It must get an end to Torment, you are in torment. How do you feel when that is happening? That cannot compare to what will happen in hell. Somebody asked a question once. What in hell do you want? Why are we so bent on enjoying the pleasures of life? Going headlong into hell. What do we want in hell so much? That we have to enjoy everything on this life. Man just can't satisfy these days. Man wants everything. And the only thing that man seems not to want today, so I to say, is Jesus. Give me girls. Give me sex. Give me weed. Give me rum. Not to mention the rum. Our young people these days, as they wake in the morning, give me rum. They don't understand that actually what they are doing to themselves is cutting their lives short. And along with the wrong, happy have a split for a cigarette. And the people who made the cigarette tells you smoking can be dangerous to your health. But we don't care. We want these things. Hallelujah. That's an appetite that we have. But can I tell you today, these things are leading our people down to hell. But you're going to remember, even today, that in Desmond's funeral, I told you to escape hell. This will not leave your memory on that day. You will remember. Somebody told you about hell. You, 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 can, you can slide church as much as you want. You can hold on to the things as much as you want. But this word that you have heard today about hell, it will not leave you because it will stand before you on the day of judgment. The third flame that I want to tell you about is the, the, the flame of separation. In verse 26, Abraham spoke of a great gulf. <laughs> Listen to it. The Bible says, Let the wheat and the tears grow together until the day of harvest. So the great separation day is coming. You see, if, if things happen in church in a pastor, and the pastor tries to get rid of somebody, he might get rid of half of the church. Because what we know, especially in a community like this, everybody has family. Just look, just look at all the people who are connected to the Drummond's family. Sister Michi, a primo. But you connected to Drummond, Julie Clark. That's how you go. Well, your Clark. So we would think that she would be so distant from the Drummond's. But see here, Pastor can't get up and, 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 and make some decisions. Sometimes I get rid of this one. Pastor has to be wise. But thank God there's a great day of separation coming. And the one who will do the separation, nobody can ask him any question. Anything he does, it is well done. You can't ask him, say, then who do you mean you can't touch my wife? How do you mean you can't touch my cousin? No matter what you would have done in this church, when him come, he will make that final judgment. That's why I remind you again, live for yourself, acknowledging God, and do not allow anyone to block you from the presence of God. There will be a day of separation. That day, I believe, is very soon. Look about your life, young people. Look about your life, all the people. That day is coming soon. And the final thing I want to tell you about today 
is the flame of an unanswered prayer. To the end of our passage, we read where the rich man, he asked Abraham to send someone to his family to tell them not to come to this place because this place is a place of torment. He said that he had five brothers who were on the road to ruin. But what did Abraham say to this rich man? Abraham said to him, They have the prophets. Let them listen to the prophets. How much are you saying now in front of people here? How much are you saying? They will let them have the pocket. But now I hear them from another day. I'll, I'll bring a clap if you want to come out and try this man. I don't know where, I don't know where Pastor Palmer will give them the knife for. You know, so some people say that. You shouldn't even get the knife. But we're from beat up, beat up, beat up. All right, Pastor Palmer, him. Why you better be chatting to him and pull up him and blood him?
Some unemployed people escape hell. Brown people escape hell. Those who are online escape hell. Ah, the churchmen, the day is coming near. Hallelujah. Oh, what a day that will be for the Christians. But where will you be on that day? Will you hear, come ye blessed of my Father? Or will you hear, depart from me? I know you not. Yes, the switch man was conscious in heaven. If you go there, you are going to be conscious as well. You will know that you have missed the boat already. And guess what? The sad thing about it, if you find yourself in hell, there is no way of coming back. That's where you will be forever. If you are going to escape hell, you must do it now. So, as I bring this to a close today, I ask you the question, for what shall it profit you if you should gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Or what shall you give in exchange for your soul? Young woman, Jesus is the best husband you have. If you are sick, there's only one healer I know. If you need peace, there's only one Prince of Peace I know. Whatever you need in this life, there's only one who can supply all your needs. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Somebody just lift your hand and give him praise. Come on, just lift your hand and call the name of Jesus. Yes, we have found him to be everything that we need and more. And we give him to you today. Hallelujah. You do not need to die and go to a devil's hell. Seek the Lord. While he may be found, call upon him while he is there. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. We thank you for your people even now as they have listened to your words. We pray, mighty God, that your people will be conscious of their need for you. They will not only be conscious of that need for salvation, but they will be conscious enough to say, I give my life to Jesus and I will serve him all my days. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be asking Pastor Clark to pray for the family at this time. I'm going to ask the family members to remain in your positions and the rest of us give it support. You will stand as Pastor Clark leads us to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our loving Father, our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we come to you another time because we know that you are here for each and every one of us at every time. Lord, I ask that you will be around the Germans family. They are grieving in so many ways today. But Lord, I pray that you comfort them. Hallelujah. Help them to remember that you is God. There is no one else. And that you is to be served. God, for without you, they cannot exist. So help them to realize that you is the God man. You is their provider. You is the way maker for them. Help them to, hallelujah, to rely on you, hallelujah. Knowing God that you will never fail. I ask that you will bless each and every one of them. God. I pray that peace will expand among the family. Hallelujah. They learn to love each other even more better than they before. 
But we are into our closing days again. Now we have another time to fight and fuss and quarry. Now is the time to seek help them to realize that God. Father, I leave them in your hands. For you to take care and to see over them, to direct them. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Clark. We will be going now to the place of interment. We're going to be doing the recessional hymn in the sweet by and by. We're going to ask the Paul bearers to uh, stand by. When we get to the entrance, the, the entrance, you will come immediately after the ministers. Please remain where you are. Don't, don't spoil up where you are. Please stay where you are and let's do this in an orderly way. Okay, so we're going to be at the second verse uh, moving out and the family members will come behind the ministers while the rest of the congregation will come after. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise one more time. We honor you and we bless your name. We thank you for having been with us and for speaking to us through your words. Now as we depart from this place, we ask that your presence will go with us, you will cover us on the road, and God, you will just continue to encourage, to strengthen, to comfort this family as they go to these last moments of putting to rest their family member. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a land that